do you guys have any ideas about what we would do now? Um, when we set up the, the beaker, like the uh, mm -hmm. Right. And decide which one is for cathode. Good. doesn't want to do this, it's being forced to. And so this is an electrolysis, then that side is positive, right? This side is positive? That's right. We don't actually need that for this particular problem, but that's good practice. Yeah, the end will be positive in this electrolytic cell. So here's the half reactions that are happening in each cell. That's a good step. Um, now in this problem, I don't think we're going to need the cell potential. Because remember, all they're asking us is the volume of hydrogen gas that's been produced. They're not really asking an electricity question. Any other ideas about how we might figure out how much gas is being produced? I think at some point we will have to use that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Basically, this is kind of a stoichiometry problem. Remember from stoichiometry, if you know how much starting materials are used up, you can figure out how much product is being made. Well, what do we need to do a stoichiometry problem? We need a balanced overall reaction. Is that the thing we're missing? We've got the half reactions, but not the overall reaction. So let's write down what the overall reaction would be. What starting materials will we have here? Are the electrons balancing? Yes. And we have to check that. If the electrons didn't balance, we would have to do some multiplication first to make them balance. But the two electrons balance from the two half reactions. So did I get this right? Two chlorides, two waters, and here we've got chlorine, a hydrogen, and two hydroxides. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and this is balanced because the half reactions were balanced. So this will be balanced as well. All right. Now we are putting in 132 liters of chlorine gas. want to figure out what volume of hydrogen we're going to get. Okay, so we or actually, we're producing this much chlorine, and we want to know what, what volume of hydrogen we're going to get. Is that what they said? What volume is produced in the same time it takes to produce 132 liters of chlorine gas? OK, you were saying? Um, do we Okay, yeah. How, how would we do that? Um, isolate the PV and PV and NRT. Oh, I see. So you're going to use the PV equals NRT? Wait, hold on. Because we already have a volume. Right. Okay. Well, um, I think that in this case, how do we usually do stoichiometry? We usually do stoichiometry, remember, by um, translating into moles and then figuring out the moles of something else. But I think we can short circuit all that here because we're working with an ideal gas. And in an ideal gas, the volume is proportional to the number of moles. So we don't actually have to translate from volume into moles. We can just keep working with volumes. Um, because if we have twice the number of moles, we'd also have twice the volume. So I would simply say that we're producing 132 liters of chlorine gas. 
And now, what Unix do I want my answer to be in? What unit should, that, should the answer to the problem be in? Um, done. Leaders? Yeah, leaders of what? So we need to do a conversion from liters of chlorine into liters of hydrogen. So we need to set up a conversion ratio. What unit should I put down here? Well, first of all, which units do we need? Here we need to put in liters of chlorine to cancel these liters of chlorine. And what units do we want up here? Good. And now we can do what you were thinking about, which is put in the right numbers. What number should I put down here? Um, two, because that is two. Because of this number? Wait. No. Yes. What? Now, this represents the chlorine gas that's being produced. What's the stoichiometric coefficient of the chlorine gas? Just number one. Just one. Yeah, this is just a number one. They didn't give us the number, or we didn't write down a number, which means there's really a number one. And what number should I put here for liters of hydrogen? What this tells us is every time we produce a liter of chlorine, we also produce a liter of hydrogen. That's what our balanced equation is telling us. Remember, this is kind of a little bit weird because we're not going from starting materials to products. They told us how much of one product we've made, and we're, they're asking us how much of the other product we're going to get. Ah, this is going to come out to be pretty simple then. So what's the answer? 100 <laughs> Okay. Uh, and again, this is just the fact that this is an ideal gas. Um, remember that the number of moles is proportional to the volume here. So this is telling us every time we produce one, one mole of this, we're also going to produce one mole of this. But for an ideal gas, liters are proportional to moles. So this also tells us that every time we produce one liter of this, we produce one liter of this. Basically, it's telling us that we're producing equal amounts of the chlorine and the hydrogen. So since we produced 132 liters of chlorine, we must be producing 132 liters of the hydrogen. The equation tells us that we're producing these in equal amounts, so they have to come out in uh, equal amounts here. This seems a little weird because we never even had to use these numbers over here. So what did we have to do here? Um, so you guys, were, you thought about a lot of the right steps. But well, the first thing, the hardest step was finding the right half reaction. So it's really a pain working with that big table because you're constantly hunting through the table and it's hard to see the reactions that are relevant and stuff. Um, one thing that was helpful here was to be clear in our mind about the difference between our starting materials and our products. They told us we were doing an electrolysis of an aqueous sodium chloride solution. That told us that these were our starting materials, sodium chloride and water. And the problem also gave us some big hints. They, they, the problem implied that we were producing chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. So I wrote those down. I, obviously, I wasn't trying to balance things here, but I was writing down that these would be these products. And then we had to look for half reactions that had these starting materials and these products. I think the chlorine was easiest because there was only one chlorine reaction, right? And, that, and, um, and this has the right starting material and the right product. Water is tricky, because there's lots of reactions that have water in them. But I think there was only one reaction that had water as a starting material and hydrogen gas as a product. And also, once we had this reaction, we knew that the other reaction had to be a reduction. So that was, that was a clue that we were looking for a reduction where water was being reduced to hydrogen gas. And you just have to take your time and go through the table and see which, which equations are relevant. As it turned out, we didn't even need these potentials over here, although we used them to confirm this as an electrolytic cell, so that was good. The key step here was to find the overall equation. I think a lot of students don't realize how often you need to do that. Another key was just to realize that this is a stoichiometry problem. So one thing to realize is sometimes the electrochemistry problems are not even about electrochemistry. They're really just stoichiometry problems in disguise. And this is really kind of a stoichiometry problem in disguise with just a little garnish of electrochemistry. The key was getting this. When you work out, these, these numbers usually refer to moles. Two moles of this, two moles of this, one mole of this, and one mole of this. But for ideal gases, they can also refer to volumes, because the volume is proportional to the number of moles, and we use that. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box thank you